I'm in an ante room in my basement. I've got my office over here where I do all my editing of videos. The camera is actually sitting in the doorway to a full bath. There's actually a shower back there. I kind of use this as my apartment because I get up way earlier than everybody else in the house. And my shop is over here and heading out in the shop is the door to the backyard. I want to have guns readily available for me to grab and go out in the backyard to protect my flock. That's one of the things that I wanted to have when I decided to go and approach Tactical Walls about using some of their stuff. And so I want to have my 1022 with the silencer on it loaded up, ready to go, ready to grab without me having to do dials and stuff on a safe. And this wall right here, after looking at all the different walls down in the basement that serve the location need, this is actually the only one that doesn't have a power box of some kind in the space between the studs. And it created uh, creates a few extra challenges for me that I'm just going to see how they play out. But it gets everything a little bit close to the edge here. And I might have to tie the two studs together and mount it uh, a little off center. That's not going to be a big problem. Uh, and also, <laughs> my stud sensor is dying. Uh, so, but it looks like there's actually non-standard space. It's a little big here. So I might have to shim inside here as well. Um, but I'll cover that once I cut the hole in here. But you know, this isn't the best lighting. This isn't the best sound for the kinds of videos I do. And I had to go to an older camera so I could get the, the wide angle so you could see what I'm doing. But this is gonna be kind of a lot more raw because I'm, I wanna show you exactly what I'm doing when I put this in. And this first hole is just enough for me to confirm that there isn't anything in the wall that will get in the way or cause a safety hazard as I'm cutting. Power boxes, wires, and plumbing can end up in really weird places in houses, so don't skip this step. <laughs> so it looks good. So now I'm gonna take the back side of the frame. I've removed the mirror from it, and I'm gonna set it up and make some marks, try and get an idea of where I want this to sit, and that way I'll know how high to cut, how low to cut. One of the first things I had to do actually after taking the two sections apart is I had to, I had to move the magnetic latch from what would have ended up being the bottom to the top because it came with the latch here for right-handed opening. But I'm going to actually be sliding something in this corner and so I need it to open out this way. It's going to stick out into this hallway. but. There's not going to be anybody coming up or down except for me when I'm using this anyway. At this point, I'm just roughing out the hole for the insert, using the right stud as my guide. That'll keep the frame from sticking out past the wall on the left. The included instructions suggest using the instructions themselves as a template for cutting, but I think this way is much easier. So the project just got extra interesting because, as I su suspected, the next stud is out here but this is actually the width of the opening from here to here. It's just, it's just a gap, it's just drywall right there. So I'm gonna have to do non-standard insulation, which is gonna be a extra tricky, a little bit of a pain in the butt, but, but it'll work. After chewing the hole with my level, I simply go to town on the drywall with the drywall saw. Because the frame goes over the hole first and the inserts have built-in trim, the edges don't have to be perfect at all. However, I think I did a good job of making clean, straight cuts nonetheless. All right. Okay, now I'm gonna test fit to see if I got the hole roughly the right size. That looks good. <clears throat> First try. Okay, so the drywall is cut pretty well. The, the problem is it's actually 18 and a half inches in between this stud and this stud because it's the end of the wall. So I have got to create some shimming in here so that both the insert and the mirror face itself have something solid to mount to. So <laughs> I'm gonna need a little bit of thinking about that. 
and uh, figure it out because it's actually it's four and a half inches in here that I've got to shim out and that's I'm not going to do that by stacking three two by fours <laughs> all the way in there so we'll see what I can do <laughs> we'll come back to this <laughs> well shut my mouth I ended up shimming it with three two by fours worth of worth of width I didn't it's not three two by fours all the way up and down it's in sections and uh, I use some are just blocks along the way, but it's going to work perfectly for the purposes here. And this just goes to show you, you know, this is a bigger project, especially if you don't know if you've got perfect 16 inch center to center studs. I knew going into it that I might have to do something like this. I'm experienced enough that I, I didn't have a problem with it, but some of you might be better off hiring somebody to put this in and it shouldn't, shouldn't cost too much to have somebody to do a project like this. But now all that's left is to hang the frame, make sure it's square put the inserts in and then rehang the mirror and this is all going to be done. The frame is relatively light and this makes it a very easy one person job. I get it mostly level using the upper right hand corner of the hole to do my initial alignment of the frame. I put the first screw in to hold the frame steady but I don't torque it down because I want the frame to be able to move until I make it perfectly level. Once the second screw is in I torque both screws down and proceed to drive the remaining four screws in place. Note that the frame is pre-drilled so you don't have to worry about splitting the grain. Tactical Walls also includes all of the mounting hardware that you're going to need. The whole thing was designed to be as painless as possible for a product that mounts inside of your wall space. Alright, this needs a... I need to clean this up a bit. It's getting dusty everywhere, actually. Now that's in place, I'm going to... See where I want my magnets. I already put one up here because I think that's a pretty good place to, to at least try it. I can pull it off and just tape it into place if I need to. So now I'm going to try out a few, few different placements of guns. This might not be what I keep in here, but this definitely is going to go in there. And that looks like that wedge is in there pretty well on its own. They have a, a supplemental mag magnet that I would put on the outside here to hold it by the suppressor. Well, I'm going to have to try different things. But basically what I'm seeing is the only other place that I could use a, a magnet to hold a gun would be right in here. And yeah, I could stick a, a Glock or something else right there, which, which I'll probably do. So I'm going to put the one magnet here and I'm not going to have any magnets up top. I'll just use Velcro to stick different things that I want in there. Everything still fits. I'm big about checking and rechecking and rechecking. So I'm gonna use these self-tapping screws and mount the insert to the studs. If you're familiar with standard stud spacing and you did the math, you know I still have about a half an inch of extra space. However, the inserts are flexible and this flexibility easily accommodates the gap when mounting them in between the studs. <laughs> wow, almost done. Now all I need to do is rehang the mirror and I am totally done. I can just stack it up. Yay! How about that? Man, yeah, and you see this light. That's super bright. That worked great. This is awesome. Look at that. Wow. And that's impressive. I didn't know it would be so tight. It's only lashed at the top here, but you wouldn't know it. That's nice and tight. Oh, sweet. 
a lot of different things fit, but this is the combination I, I went with right now. And these things are always going to be a work in progress. And uh, they include a, a shelf. You can put anywhere, but I might end up putting it here and just have things sitting in, in two different shelves because there's obviously space that's wasted up there. But I've got a shotgun. I'm going to load this all up. This, this was the number one thing I wanted to have set up because if I hear my chickens going crazy, this is the thing that I want to grab. It's a silenced 1022 takedown. It's very accurate. And uh, I can grab this and use this as my weapon light, handheld weapon light, or I could slap it on the fore end of the shotgun. So that's why I have that detached. And uh, the AAC pilot is screwed on there and it's a perfect fit. It's loaded up with CCI standard velocity, which is my favorite rimfire ammunition because it's super accurate and it's actually subsonic out of a 16 inch barrel. And then I've got my Gen 4 G17 magnets holding it in place. Got a loaded mag and I've got a Velcro mag carrier that I, that I got from Vanquest Tough Belt Gear. And the cool thing about this is I can just grab this, this, and then take this with me and I'm ready to go. So this is not a, um, an everyday carry. I've got that stuff upstairs in the shelf, but that's in case I'm down here and I want to grab something fast. I've got my choice between <laughs> the big gun, shotgun, Mossberg 590A1 that I built up myself, suppressed 22 subsonic, or nine millimeter <laughs> with plenty of ammunition. And it all hides in plain sight, just like that. I am a huge fan of this. That is really cool.